Welcome to Chesterfield Plastic Surgery. I'm Dr. John Holson. I'm Dr. Scott Geiger. And we're board certified plastic surgeons here to talk to you today a little bit about breast augmentation. There's a lot that goes into breast augmentation, uh, a lot of choices to be made. There's some great information out there. There's some not so great information out there. We want to dispel any of the myths and just make you feel confident, comfortable, and happy in that choice that we're about to make. Yeah, the consult uh, for a breast augmentation will take anywhere from about 45 minutes to an hour, and that's a lot of time out of your day too. So these videos hopefully will help you um, on your own time go through information from trusted sources from the surgeons who are going to be doing your procedure. So what we'll do is we're going to walk you through the basics of breast augmentation. Hey, you know, what, uh, who's a candidate for breast augmentation? What type of implants are there? Uh, how do we get those implants in there? Where's my scars? What's my recovery looking like? Uh, how much time out of work? And uh, overall, how do I get that result I want? And, and overall, you know, what's the cost and, uh, that goes into it as well? So by the end of watching these videos, you should be pretty well informed. And if you're in the range of about four to six months uh, between uh, in being interested in surgery and actually wanting a surgical date, um, that's probably the right time to make a, an appointment for us to get on our schedules to um, have your result in, a, in the time frame that you're expecting it. So the best candidates are an otherwise healthy uh, female who's interested in a breast enhancement of some sort, um, usually an increase in volume and, and an improvement in uh, shape and size uh, of your breasts too. But otherwise healthy uh, with uh, reasonable expectations and we're gonna help you walk through um, you know, the best way to get you the enhancement that you're the most interested in. So the basic steps for uh, undergoing uh, breast augmentation uh, is um, that it's uh, performed very safely in an, usually an outpatient mm -hmm. surgery center. Uh, and it's an outpatient surgery, meaning that you go home the same day, uh, very comfortable. Um, it's, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to perform. Uh, and it's under general anesthesia, meaning you're completely asleep and uh, comfortable being monitored by the anesthesia staff. And your recovery is actually pretty good. Uh, for the most part, you have some soreness and some discomfort for about three to five days or so. And it's usually more of a tightness than a pain. Uh, we do give you some pain medications to make sure you're super comfortable afterwards, some, some muscle relaxants uh, to help everything uh, relax and you feel comfortable. But you can go out and do normal stuff the next day. You could go out and get lunch the next day with your friends. You'll still be a little uncomfortable, but you're able to do normal, light, daily stuff is perfectly fine. Uh, after about a week, we'll see you back. Uh, everything should be looking great. You should be feeling pretty good by that point in time. Uh, get back to normal life, activity, work, school, etc. Um, and then we'll slowly increase that activity over the next month. And by, by a month, you can get back into most of your normal routines as far as you know, running, jogging, uh, to the gym, and whatnot, just as long as you're pretty well supported with a nice supportive sports bra. And then final results, uh, while the results are immediate uh, once uh, the breast implant or the breast tissue has been enhanced, uh, it does take a few weeks to, you know, a month or so mm -hmm. to have the implant settle yeah. into the proper position to have your final result too. And we'll walk you through that step, uh, step by step as you go along in the recovery process. How do you go through deciding which implant is going to be right for your patient, Dr. Holson? Really, it all depends on what your goals are. Um, your goals and your body type, um, the actual breast tissue that you're starting with uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. You know, women that are interested in more of a natural result can use uh, the more shaped or teardrop uh, shaped breast. Mm -hmm. Women that are, want uh, a little bit more volume in the upper yeah. portion of the mm -hmm. breast usually like the more round, cohesive gel, sperm stable, gummy bear type implants that give you more yeah. projection in the uh, upper portion of the breast. Yeah, and you said gummy bears, so you'll probably hear that a lot as you're looking into breast implants. Now gummy bear implants uh, are pretty much the standard anymore. That's pretty much all we use uh, at this point in time. What that means, it's a very form-stable gel. So unlike the old implants, had a really uh, thin shell to them, a really oily silicone, and uh, those have been off the market for quite some time now. All the implants we use today, uh, this day and age, are all like fifth generation implants. They have a, a solid gel on the inside that still is really nice and soft and very natural feeling, um, but it's solid. We can cut down the middle of that implant and it, uh, it is a solid gel, not like an oil. So it doesn't leak out through the body, uh, it doesn't cause uh, some of the problems that some of the older implants ran into after years and years and years of time. Probably one of the most studied devices on, on the planet by this point, yeah, uh, too, yeah, so absolutely. they're they're very safe. 
Hey, so we talked a lot about uh, you know, breast augmentation using implants and devices. What about using someone's own fat? Sure. There's a, uh, we get this question quite often. Um, there are some women that uh, would like to use more natural tissue uh, than saline or, or silicone. And uh, they're often asked, uh, can I use my own fat to uh, increase the size of my breast? And of course, the answer is yes. Um, that is uh, definitely a, a way to do it. But uh, there are some limitations. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what your goals are. If you are uh, interested in a uh, more subtle uh, but noticeable natural result, um, then using your own fat is, uh, is definitely an option if you have uh, the, uh, the fat to use. Uh, typically we take it from your, uh, your belly, your love handles, even your thighs, and if you have enough fat there to um, uh, get to the size that you would like to be and accomplish the goals that you want, absolutely, it's a great option. And you also get the added benefit of improved contour in those areas that we, that we take the liposuction from, which is, yeah. always, uh, which is always nice. Bonus. But if, you're, if your uh, goal is to be a, um, a pretty significant increase in size or retain some fullness in the upper portion of your breast, probably using an implant is going to be a, a better approach to that. Yeah, and uh, you know, fat will just more uh, enhance the volume that you already have, but it doesn't really, we can't really change the shape, or the, we can't really change the shape of the breast. So uh, fat's a great way to just say, hey, I like my breasts the way they are now. I just wish they were just a little bit more full. So it's phenomenal for that. Maybe we can get you an increase in cup size with one round of fat grafting. Uh, we can do some serial rounds of fat grafting. It does have a limit to how much we can put in safely with each time. Um, we could put in a whole bunch, but it's not all going to live. So we want to do it the right way and the safe way. So uh, with each round, we can get a little enhancement. Uh, uh, but again, it's going to be more just volumizing the breast, but not really changing the shape. Now you mentioned upper pull fullness. If you want a little more cleavage or uh, something of the sort, that's really implants going to be best for that. And we'll walk you through that. So obviously breast augmentation requires uh, some sort of scar mm -hmm. uh, and some sort of access to get into your breast to place yeah. the implant. And uh, Dr. Geiger, what, what's your preferred approach uh, and access incision for uh, the breast implant? Sure, so there's a, a couple of different options that we use as you alluded to. So probably the most popular throughout and the most popular that I use is gonna be uh, an incision along the breast crease or along that breast fold. Uh, sometimes we'll use an incision that's underneath the areola or the round or pigmented part of the nipple. Uh, occasionally there can be an incision in the armpit area or an axillary approach in there. That one, I don't typically use that incision much. Uh, going through the armpit, it's just not quite as clean or sterile of an area. Uh, even though it's hidden with your arms down to your side, that scar can be a little more visible with your arms ever raised up or if you're in a swimsuit or a tank top. So I don't really use that incision too much. but. The most commonly is definitely going to be along the breast crease. And there's a bunch of benefits to use in that particular incision. One, it hides really well. It's a natural crease that your body has. Uh, and so once it's healed up and uh, the scars fade really nicely, you really never see that incision. Uh, two, it allows us to slide into a natural space underneath the breast or get underneath that muscle uh, if we need to into a natural pocket that the body has without ever really disrupting the breast tissue. We don't cut through any breast ducts or uh, anything like that. So it works out wonderful. A little lower rates of infection and any kind of complications. And it's a really safe, uh, pretty awesome approach. Now, occasionally I will use uh, an incision underneath the areola or the pigmented part of the, uh, the nipples. That's especially if someone has very large uh, nipples or areolas uh, and they want those shrunken down. So we can do that at the same time as the breast augmentation. Um, we can get access uh, through the breast tissue that way, and it works great, or if you had a prior implant placed through that scar, we'll go ahead and reuse that scar. But for the most part, uh, if this is your first time having a breast augmentation, uh, we're gonna probably use a little scar along the breast fold because it just has uh, many, many pluses to it. So the scar itself is probably about an inch or, or just slightly bigger, uh, and it fades very nicely. Uh, with time, we give you scar gel to uh, help maximize your body's ability to form the best scar possible. But really, uh, like Dr. Geyer said, it's uh, quite imperceptible, yeah. uh, hides very well in that crease. Yeah. So probably your most important question is, hey, what size can I end up at? Or you're trying to think of what size that you want to be. And our goal is to try and get into your head to really figure out what that size is gonna be. Because it's not really just a cup size, all right? Because every bra is made different. You already know this, but a double D cup from Victoria's Secrets is gonna be a C cup at Nordstrom's or something of the sort like that. So we don't wanna focus on the cup size. We really wanna focus on the shape and the look that you wanna have. So. We're gonna do some different ways to try and get into your head. And that's some sizing in the office and maybe even some imaging. Dr. Holes, you wanna tell us how do we go about that? 
Yeah, and I think you've hit you've hit it right right spot on uh, too. Uh, we really have to find out if you're interested in more of a, a natural look, a, a subtle but noticeable difference in your normal breast size, or more fullness in the uh, upper portion, or more projected and more uh, augmented look. Uh, and we use this sizing uh, system where we actually use a, a version of the implants in your bra, so you mm -hmm. can try things on, try different clothes on in front of a mirror, and visualize for yourself what that looks like too. But also, we can combine this with uh, the latest in uh, 3D imaging uh, technology, uh, the first yeah. uh, practice in Missouri to uh, have this augmented reality type of imaging yeah. that can create a uh, image of you that you could actually look into a mirror and we could adjust the implant size and position and volume uh, and you could actually see yourself in this magic mirror mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the different size implants on and how your breast uh, could look with this final result. Yeah, patients love it. It's a great uh, way to really kind of see it on yourself. It's like trying on the implants with uh, before you put the implants in. So it really helps kind of solidify what you're looking for uh, and get that kind of feel that you want uh, using the latest, greatest software that's available. So what's your recovery going to look like? Well, uh, you know, after surgery, you're going to wake up you're gonna use all dissolvable stitches and a couple of different layers all underneath your skin. There's gonna be some skin glue or tapes on top. So you got nothing you have to do. There's no ointments, creams, or anything like that you have to do. Uh, we'll put you in a post-operative bra to keep things uh, snugged up and some little gentle compression. Uh, sometimes a wrap, sometimes a breastband. It'll just depend whatever's gonna be perfect for you. Uh, afterwards, you're gonna stay snugged up in that bra, okay, for about the first week or so till we see you back. Uh, and then you can keep using that surgical bra or a sports bra for about a month or maybe about six uh, weeks or so before you can start transitioning to regular bras. And uh, the rest of the recovery? Yeah, sure. Of course, you've had uh, surgery, so we want you to take it easy here for the first uh, few weeks, too. You're going to have some soreness that's going to keep you down for just a little bit, too. But uh, regular activities around the house, um, light activities are just fine. But then uh, at a, by about the month mark, uh, four weeks or so, too, you can resume uh, exercising as long as everything uh, is you know, comfortable for you through there, too. So at about four weeks, six weeks, somewhere around there, too, you can resume um, mm -hmm. full, uh, full workouts, full activities. Um, generally without any issue. So we're often asked by young women who are undergoing a breast augmentation, will this affect my ability to breastfeed or be a breastfeeding mom? And the answer is no. Uh, the approach that we use, the undercrease incision, really minimally uh, uh, impacts the, uh, the ducts in your ability to breastfeed afterwards too. Uh, it's very safe to breastfeed uh, with silicone or saline breast implants or with fat grafting breast uh, augmentation as well. Now, after you've completed breastfeeding, um, your, your breasts obviously will have changed in shape and size and volume, uh, and you may wish to have um, an improvement or an enhancement, um, either a, a return to the pre-pregnancy shape and size too, which would be you know, a breast mm -hmm. lift or a, a tightening of the breast tissue, uh, an increase in volume because you liked uh, how your breasts were during, mm -hmm. uh, during uh, pregnancy and in breastfeeding, or a combination of both. So one, one final question maybe if you uh, like that fullness in your breast uh, after breastfeeding, when can you do a breast augmentation to kind of re-get back to that size? So we really want you to wait about six to 12 months uh, after you're done with breastfeeding. And that just lets all the milk ducts kind of drain and all the glands go down. Uh, that really helps improve your surgery, lets the tissues get back to where they want to go, and then we can really get you that final size and shape. So about six to 12 months after you're done breastfeeding is really the optimal time to uh, pursue a breast augmentation if you want. So one of the more important questions that uh, are on uh, most patients' mind is, uh, what's the price? What's this going to cost? And we try to be as mm -hmm. transparent as possible uh, when it comes to uh, pricing, and it'll all be broken down for you, but yeah. uh, what goes into that? Sure, yeah, so there's, uh, there's uh, as with any cosmetic surgery, there's gonna be a surgeon fee, then the, the cost of being in the OR, and then for the anesthesiologist, who's gonna get you comfortable and sleepy throughout this procedure. Uh, so we'll combine all those, we'll list all that out for you. But in general, uh, a breast augmentation is gonna run somewhere around six to $8,000, just depending on implant choices and timing in your breast and body size and all that stuff. So now that you've learned a lot more about the breast augmentation consultation process from, you know, am I a good candidate? Uh, what type of implants could we use? How do we do our sizing or pick our size? Uh, how the surgery goes, your scars, your recovery, costs, all that good stuff. Uh, we'd be happy to take that next step on the journey with you. So uh, go ahead and give our office a call, schedule a consultation. and Yeah. 
Our website's great. You can find before and after photos. You can contact us through uh, the website. Find us on social media. Uh, reach out to our patient care coordinator too and she'll work with your schedule to uh, meet up with us and we can't wait to meet you.